It is my pleasure to give you my insights on the innovations in online learning that I've gained from teaching an online class on creative problem solving to over 40,000 students. Now, the images you're going to see coming up are images actually of these students, or a handful of these students from the class I taught. And they had to submit as part of their final assignment uh, a picture of themselves and their six-word memoir. This is essentially six words that captures one of the key takeaways from the class. So how do you teach creative problem solving to 40,000 people? So I used a platform that actually spun out of Stanford called NovoEd. And this platform is designed for collaborative work and interaction, very different from a lot of the other online platforms. And here's how it worked. I created a lecture. Now, each lecture was less than five minutes long, so about the length of this talk. It took about a week to create each one of these because they're very highly produced. They might be on topics like challenging assumptions, or reframing problems, or connecting, combining ideas, or creative teamwork. And then there were readings that amplified those topics. But most important, there was then a challenge. And these could be either individual challenges or group challenges. At the end of the week, when they were due, the students would upload their work. It might be a writing, it might be slides, it might be a video, it might be an image. But the most important part is that the students would then evaluate each other. You can imagine, it's not possible for me to grade 40,000 people. So I created a rubric with essentially guidelines on how to evaluate. And then I would do five or six of them so they could see how this was done. So there were some very interesting insights I got from this. First of all, this class is made up of people from over 150 countries. The age range was from 18 to 80 years old. The center of gravity, though, is about 25 to 35 people who are out of school who want to keep learning. But they come to the class with completely different motivations, different incentives, different educational backgrounds, different languages, of course, and different reasons that they're taking the class. So what I learned is that I needed to break the problems up into really small pieces to essentially make sure that people stayed somewhat on track. There was a lot of opportunity for miscommunication when you have this many people. In fact, teaching in an online class is quite different than a classroom. When we're in a room this size, it's like uh, surfing on the on a ocean, right? And if you're a good teacher, an experienced teacher, when you're surfing, the waves keep coming in, but you can respond to them individually. And if there's some barrier there, you can move around it. But when you're teaching an online class, it's like being in an ocean liner. And when you see that iceberg, you will hit it. And I got really used to hitting icebergs. Um, so I ended up, every time I taught, I knew which icebergs to avoid the next time. For example, as I said, I had to divide the sessions, the assignments into small pieces. I also needed to give individual assignments first. In an online class, not everyone is so actively involved. In fact, there are a lot of tourists. There are people who actually come, and it's quite interesting, they audit the class. They spend their time going through all the material, but they don't do the assignment. Well, it's not fair to put those people on a team with others who are really, really committed. The other thing, and this is the most important, is that I deputize everybody in the class to be on the teaching team. Now, that might sound crazy, but you think about it. As I said, I can't answer all the questions. And collectively, the people in the class know much, much more than I do. So essentially, I don't just invite them. I urge them to answer other people's questions. So there's a very active class forum. And in that forum, people post their questions, and everyone else answers them. And collectively, the solutions are really compelling. So, this has been a really remarkable experience for me. I found that my job, I know it's my job at Stanford when I teach to do this, but it became a very extreme case in this, in this situation where my job is really to be the instigator. I basically set things in motion and let the whole process take over. And what ends up happening is the results are really remarkable and quite surprising because you're getting solutions from people from all over the world and so getting very, very interesting and, and unusual insights. The students who participate in this class say this is one of the most exciting learning experiences they've ever had. They get to work with people all over the world on really provocative challenges. And they walk away saying this is something they certainly want to do again. In fact, if you go back to the course website months later after the course is over, students are still coming there to work together and to communicate with each other and to use the resources. So this image sort of is my imagining what this is. I set things in motion and then see the amazing things that happen. So the question I want to tee up for the group is, how can we leverage the power of these online learning communities to solve major world problems? Thank you.